Hello Leiden. Hey ho Leiden. Khushamad Leiden. Zdravstvo Leiden. Hello Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hello Leiden. Marhaba Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi, Podai Leiden. Hello Leiden. Welcome to the newest episode of our English speaking weekly show. As you know, our show is about stories, stories of the international community living and thriving in Leiden. Today we have amazing guests in our studio. We have Andy Vince from UK. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. And we have Rohini uh, Almardani. Welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. Uh, no, we are delighted to have both of you. Thanks. And really excited for your stories. So, um, what we are going to do, we're, uh, I'm going to ask you to uh, introduce yourself, uh, Andy, a little bit of um, information who is Andy. Okay, um, I'm Andy, as you just said. Um, I'm from the UK originally. We moved here as a family in 2006, so I've been here 15 years this past August and came with my wife and what were our two little children then, but they're now uh, grown up, young adults at university. And we came because I'm the pastor in the international church serving the international community here That's in the amazing. Leiden area. So, yeah. Lovely. So basically, uh, you are uh, Hello Leiden's church version. Yeah, 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 that would be a good way of putting it, yeah. Amazing, so, yeah. welcome. Thank you. And Rohina, what about you? Uh, hi, so I'm Rohina, I'm 22 years old, um, I live in Utrecht, but I work here at the Foundation Kaihan, uh, here in Leiden Dorp, which is next to Leiden. Almost Leiden. Almost Leiden. Yeah, it's always. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm a student at the USA University of Amsterdam. That's amazing. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, as you know, we have a little tradition in our studio. We usually ask our guests to bring um, little or big items that have some value and mm -hmm. uh, closeness to the heart. So we're going to start from you, Andy. Uh, why don't you show us what did you bring? Oh, us? okay. Yes. Well, I... Well... They were filming the other day. I, I cheated a little bit. Said, "Well, bring two objects," <laughs> and I brought three. So then, this okay. is kind of this is kind of what um, I love rocks. Um, whether it's fossils like it's ammonite, which is how I knows how many millions of years old, or, or just you know gemstones and so on. Not that this one's worth very much. But I love the texture and the shape, and just it's just the age of them. And it's ever since I was a little kid. We went on holiday, and someone we used to visit had this. A library full of glass cabinets with all of these rocks and I think that gave me my love of geology and geography and that's what I did first at university. I did a geography degree largely down to things like this. So that was my first one. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, and they're lovely. Yeah. And this one is a toy car. <laughs> um, there's a story behind this. Um, when I was a little boy, about five years old, I had a toy car just like this and I lost it. Oh. And I was so upset at the time. <laughs> and um, about a year ago, in the middle of the pandemic, I was thinking about that and thinking back over life and, you know, gains and losses and mornings and, and so on. And thinking about this little car and I thought, I wonder if I load into Mark Platz or something. If I could find it, I didn't know the brand or anything. And I found it. Some young wow. person was selling it about 50 minutes away. So we, we uh, put the bid in, got, got the agreement and... Uh, drove up and got the car and this now sits in my office and it's kind of just a, a reminder that you know in life there can be losses and there can be things that we grieve um, but actually there are things that we can regain as well and so this is my little car it's a bit of a so reminder so beautifully so, good yeah. yeah and a lovely story I'm really glad that you have found mm, it's great I wish it was the original but <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost as good as <laughs> oh that's amazing <laughs> was it exactly the same number 32 yes it was the same number wow. yeah yeah Amazing. Thank you for sharing with us. Pleasure. And I love gemstones and um, yeah, the other fossil mm. stones as well. Lovely. What about you, Rohina? What did so you bring us? I'm so glad that you brought more things. Because <laughs> <laughs> even though I want to say I'm not a mature, not materialistic, but I do have a lot of things which I'm very attached to. Uh, one of them is actually. Oh, let me show you. One of them is already in my profile. So um, I brought two other things which represent a lot uh, in my life. So the first thing are these dried flowers. They don't really look very beautiful, but they were. Uh, I got a beautiful bouquet from a friend and uh, it was a gift from my house. It was the first time I lived outside. Um, 
Well, I tried away from my parents. I moved out, and it was a very big step, not just for me, but for my parents mm. and family as well. Yeah, it was a very big step. It's a new chapter in life and uh, feeling more like an adult. So mm. that was uh, an amazing experience. Still is. I'm um, six months, uh, I think, right mm. now, living on my own. And the other thing is actually a song, which I've written down the lyrics of. Uh, don't mind my handwriting. I'm sure my, if my grandma sees this, she will scold <laughs> me so much. Like, why don't you practice your handwriting before? It's Farsi. It's also a, um, a Persian uh, song called Ham Safar. And it's um, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful song. It's so it, it's about uh, your companion of a journey, and the lyrics of the song uh, at first glance it's about going on a journey with your companion, with your friend. But if you look more into it and you listen to the song, uh, it's also about fleeing away from home. Mm -hmm. And uh, my parents and I we have flown away 20 years ago. Um, from Afghanistan, mm. so it speaks a lot to me yeah. and for my parents. So beautiful. Mm. Thank you. Can you read the first two lines at least so of that course. we can uh, hear your Of course, your yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Ham safar tan ho naro, bazar tobo ham berim, sar nuishte mon yekie, dumon masafarim. Beautiful, and it matched so <laughs> lovely with your amazing outfit. Thank you. Thank you. You look amazing. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, a, it's a traditional Afghan dress, and um, I got it from my mom as a present. So it's also it's also, also in such yeah, another okay. object. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another yeah. object. Three, yeah. three. Yeah. Three, three. three. There we go. Yeah. Well, we got away with it. Yeah, <laughs> we did. <laughs> amazing. Um, so. Um, we made a little profiles about you, about you know, uh, kind, of, kind of a glance into your life. Uh, why don't we start from yours, Andy, and let's see where did you ta take us okay. and what did you tell us through Tahir? Mm -hmm. Hello, Andy. Hi, how welcome. are you? I'm good. How are you today? What a bright, brilliant day. Yeah, wonderful. Great to see that some sunshine again at the last. Oh, hooray. <laughs> you look really so, happy with that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Always I'll enjoy sunshine. You. Okay, yeah, please come in. So what are you doing away from English Channel post-Brexit? <laughs> well, enjoying living on the European mainland for a start. So I absolutely love uh, living in Leiden and being in the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, well, life sort of continues post-Brexit. I don't know if we want to get into that one, do we? <laughs> um, but uh, no, we absolutely love living here. And uh, we've been here since 2006. So yeah. How you ended up here? Um, we came because uh, I came to uh, be the pastor of the international church uh, community here in the city. So it was quite an adventure. Our children were eight and five at the time, and uh, we'd never lived outside of the UK before. Uh, but that's where we came. Uh, and also my, my wife's a teacher, so she works in a local international school. So that kind of continues the international theme. Yeah, I can see a lot of color. And yeah. uh, I can see there is that Interesting building at the corner. Oh, who yeah. plays Who yeah. plays the piano, by the way? Oh, you wouldn't want me playing the piano. Everyone would turn the show off. Uh, it's my wife. She, she's learning to play. She's learning. Yes. Okay. So, That's a relief. Yeah. <laughs> you at don't least, want me doing it. At least you can learn how to play. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. so what's that? What's this? This yes. is yes. the only sort of uh, church building we have as a church community. Oh, and, wow. Uh, it's my office. And where I, I think I haven't, like a time. I haven't seen a small church <laughs> as small as this one. No. Wow. Uh, well, we don't, yeah, we don't try and get everybody in here, of course. So, but, uh, I mean, it has the character, I mean, this beam and yeah, fascinating. There are a lot of stones. Yes. Yes. Why? Why? I, I, I used to be a geography teacher. But when I was a really, really young child, um, uh, we used to go on holiday uh, down to Cornwall, which is in the southwest of England. And uh, one of the people we used to go and visit, he had, a, he had a room just full of glass cases, full of rocks. And I think it just sparked uh, an interest in me. And um, 
this is my rather haphazard rock collection sprawled across so in front of theology books. Any <laughs> any interesting rock that you would like to share with us? Something very uh, outstanding or something that has a story or history or unique? Oh, well, there's lots of, oh, there's lots of uh, I mean, rocks what? here. Um, I don't know, for something with a story, um, I'll just get these very simply. The, these are from the bottom of... Uh, the Dead Sea and taken up by my son when we were over there on a trip a few years ago. From Jordan. From Jordan, yes, on the Jordan Israel border. And uh, yeah, so just Very said, hey, Dad, look at these. So then, and what, sort of, is, what is this? Oh, I couldn't tell you how many millions of years old it is, but this is an Ammonite. And so it would have had a, you know, a little thing like that coming out of it, a little crustacean. And so, yeah. Wow. That's just uh Um and here we have some Yeah, important to have a photo of the family. So So who's uh, this who's in the photo? So we've got uh strange guy that you're talking to, <laughs> uh, Helen, uh my wife, Anna our daughter, and JJ our son. So Okay. They probably might need to have a better photo of them up, but it's the <laughs> one I've got in here. So oh, I can see all your honor fossils and gemstones uh are beautiful. Mm, yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're That's quite glass cabinets, but yeah. but they're yeah. all the books. <laughs> so. That's amazing. How do you uh, pick those books uh, without uh, <laughs> dropping those stones? Carefully. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I fail, and sometimes yeah, if my toes are in the wrong the wrong <laughs> way, then I experience the rock quite personally. <laughs> so, but not too often, thank you. I haven't broken anything yet, either the rocks or myself. Rohina, let's see where did you take us. Let's go. Rohina, Welcome. should Hi. I say, should I say Stare Mashe or Khush Amadeen? Khush Amadeen, Khush Amadeen, okay. come in. How are you? Thank you, I'm good, how are you? Today there's a lot of sunshine. A lot of sunshine, you brought the sunshine today. Oh so wow, very, very that's very a compliment. That. So what brought you to Netherlands? My parents, they, uh, they went away from Afghanistan 20 years ago, the first time the Taliban invaded our country. Um, so I was around two years old when I came in here and I was brought up and raised in the Netherlands. I can see you have been cooking. Yes, what have you I've been, been cooking? cooking today for you, yeah. So it's oh, for me? For you as well, okay. of course. Okay. So I have made traditional palau. It's okay. just, it's a simple uh, white rice. Okay. Uh, my mom made sambosa. And it's not the Indian version, it's more a simple version, an Afghan one. Um, like a samosa? Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. we call it sambosa. And okay. It's, uh, but it is actually samosa. Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, we've got chutney as well. Nice. Uh, some olives, tomatoes. I made some vegetables. with vegetables. So you, you, you put a lot of effort into it. Uh, not a lot. It's okay. <laughs> and there are some photographs. Yeah. Who are these? These are my parents. Okay. When they were younger. Around Your ten... father is quite hip. Yes, he is. He definitely is. And that's you? That's me. And on the far right is my little brother. And he is my little brother as well. And that's me. And that's... That's my little brother. Uh, hello. That's me, lad. We lad, you were born in Netherlands. Yes, I was uh, born in uh, Blaricum. So do you feel yourself to be lucky that you were born in Netherlands like or you were born in Afghanistan? <laughs> Is there any conversation like that? Uh, well, I consider myself pretty lucky because uh, it's pretty nice here in uh, the Netherlands. The care is really well and I have a really br bright future to look up to. What you do in your uh, free time? Uh, in my free time, I do like to read and I work uh, at an NGO. It's called Kaihan. I work there for nothing else. I give my energy by teaching students in Kabul. So we are in Leiderdorp. Yes. And this is your this office. Is the wow. Office. Yeah, welcome. So the first thing I notice is Afghan carpets. Yes. A, a bit course. of Afghan touch. The Afghan flag. Hopefully, it will remain. Very proudly. And yes. then the map. And then a lot of photos. Who are these people? These are, as well as the founders and all of the other board members and people who have ever helped Kaihan. These are just some of the highlights, some pictures. And I think this is, you, you work with University of Kabul, so this is something from there. Yes. Appreciation letter. 
So what is Kaihan? Kaihan is a foundation and we stand for knowledge, integration and development. We And why this organization was found? What you thought, whoever thought of this idea? What are the foundation principles of this organization? So 15 years ago, a group of uh, students, Afghan medical students here in Leiden, they had this feeling like we have to help Afghans, the Afghan community in the Netherlands. There wasn't a right organization who was representing the Afghans or especially for students and everyone else. So they started this um, Kaihan Foundation. Okay, and uh, I can see photos and then there are some charts. So what are the projects you are doing? If we can just have a sneak peek. <laughs> You oh, can have a sneak peek, definitely. These are the so, projects. So, just talk us through what is this? These are the projects of um, this year, which we are working on. Okay. Just some of them. You were telling me you are taking care of what course? Research for Life. So, and what is that? That's a project where we teach students from the Kabul University how to do research. There has never been a proper uh, academic skill taught for those students and that's what we have been working on um, alongside with our professor uh, Jalal Atai. He's from the Breda University and he's helping us Kaihan with this project um, where we have been teaching students to make their own research. Brilliant. That is amazing. <laughs> well, what does Kaihan mean in general? Uh, so Kaihan is uh, split up. It's a, uh, actually split up from Dutch words uh, like kennis, uh, integratie, and uh, translates to English. That means knowledge and integration. Um, and they really want to, uh, like I said, to help people, the African community, to uh, when they move to when they migrate from Afghanistan in here, mm. how to live here, how to live in a Dutch mm. community mm. and how to go to school and to share their knowledge but also to the students and younger uh, people back in Afghanistan. Mm, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. definitely, mm. definitely. Mm. Especially in the medical um, field because uh, as some people may not know, in, uh, in Afghanistan because of the Taliban for around 20 years, um, medical practice wasn't taught very, um, how do you say, it, very proper. Mm -hmm. There was, uh, there wasn't much, uh, and especially um, teaching about, for example, the body, the human mm -hmm. body. N no one would teach people yeah, there. So or something. exactly, yeah. and mm -hmm. Kaihan did that in the, f the first, uh, as the first uh, foundation in 20 years. They did that in mm -hmm. Afghanistan. So that's um, really, uh, it's really cool. I mm. wonder. Um, when they were kind of uh, cutting the medical education um, from the universities of uh, Afghanistan when the Taliban first came, um, who did they think uh, are going to heal other people? Well, it wasn't really cutting the whole medical education. Like, they did allow that, or there were doctors who would practice it mm -hmm. and then uh, have students mm -hmm. and teach, it, teach them their own. But um, the Taliban, they... Uh, they forbid stuff like music or dancing, but also about knowledge of the, our own human body. Mm. It's what we call, it's taboo. Mm. And that's actually very wrong, because as a doctor, you have to know everything mm. about a human, right? Mm. How yeah, to take yeah, care properly, yeah. yeah. So uh, it was a big step, and um, we've got so much more photos uh, on the webpage uh, where you can see where we have been going to Afghanistan as well and teaching the students. Mm. So that's uh, very cool. Before going into the international church, um, was there another domination or um, another church that you belonged? Um, yeah, in, in, in the UK, I was in a some ways similar church, had people from all kinds of backgrounds. Um, so I was involved with that for uh, five years, or about <laughs> long, five years in terms of work and before that, you know, just as, as part of the community and uh, my wife and I mainly did youth work 
which wasn't surprising because we were school teachers. So yeah, of course. <laughs> who, do you, who, do, yeah, this <laughs> who do you ask to do the to work with the young people? You ask the teachers. So, and um, so that's good. But what I, I, I would certainly love about now is that we have people from so many different nationalities and backgrounds mm. and denominations, and some people are Christians and some aren't, and it's fine because everybody's on a on a journey together. And um, yeah, I, I love the variety of that and the challenge as well. Rowena, your family left um, Afghanistan when Taliban just came. Um, and now you're working with the University of Kabul, which is still in Afghanistan. Um, the reason why I'm saying it is um, if, as a political refugee, I would try to work with uh, Azerbaijan University. I'm from Azerbaijan mm -hmm. originally. And um, they would not accept working with me because they belong to, uh, to the government uh, mm -hmm. on, on entirety. So did they ever question you, like, why did your family leave in the first place and, uh, of the Afghanistan? Was there kind of a conversation like this between you and the university? Um, well, uh, no, I don't think so, because they all know uh, living in Afghanistan uh, during that time, mm. like right now, it was a very critical situation. Mm. There was war, mm. so no one will question you, why did you flee away from mm. them, because yeah. no one can stay there. And, um, and working with our students, it gives me so much energy. And, um, but on the other side, a more negative side, it gives me survivor's guilt. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. Um, speaking of Afghanistan and the um, religion, um, religious extremism mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. relig politics of religion. Uh, mm -hmm. When we look at uh, the case of Afghanistan, um, everybody has a different view. Some say it's mm. because of the religion. If mm. not, you know, strict Islam, then it wouldn't happen. Some say, no, it's the politics between U.S. and China and uh, mm. resources and blah, blah. And then other people say it's religious extremism. It's what Taliban is doing and it's horrible. Um, when it comes to your church, how do you address the religious extremism, for, uh, for example? Well, that's a big question. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> I know. With, um, Sorry. <laughs> no, no, uh, it, it's very real and important because I think many people, particularly maybe in Western countries, uh, are particularly quite cynical about religion mm. and they see it as being a source of of division or whatever. And I think sadly at times it can be used in that way. Um, I think it, it's about the journey of being present for one another, listening to each other recognizing that people do have different journeys mm -hmm. and, and are we willing to uh, set aside our own prejudices and our own um, our own agendas mm -hmm. to actually hear someone else's story um, I think back uh, even to my university days which was back in the dark ages before proper internet <laughs> and everything um, you know one of my closest friends was was Muslim um, now he and I and when it came to belief and for example how we viewed Jesus or mm -hmm. Isa um, was very different, but it didn't stop us being friends. Um, I mean, we quite strongly had different views, but um, you can express those in a way that is still tolerant and accepting of the other person's humanity. Um, and, and I think one of the sad things that's happened in, in many societies is there is a lack of nuance now. There's mm. a lack of the ability to mm. be in that sometimes messy and difficult space yeah. of listening to one another. You know, even if you have a different belief, someone shouldn't be persecuted for it. Um, and that can sound all very nice that in a studio. I know it's got to be worked out in reality. And, and of course, situations such as in Afghanistan right now, but yeah. elsewhere in the world too, um, it's where it hits road. But if we can do a little bit to bring a change, absolutely, maybe that can be some help. So Rightly put on. I, I'm glad your church is... Uh, um, promoting more tolerance towards other religions and mm -hmm. other um, races and yeah, being united somehow. Mm -hmm. Rina, what do you think is going to happen in Afghanistan now with the university? Um, you have to work with the university uh, and everybody's belief is that Taliban is going to shut down the universities or mm -hmm. you know, not uh, allow the women to come to universities. Um, are you in touch with the University of Kabul, what's going yes, on there? Yes, actually the with the students, uh, I'm uh, in direct contact with them. And uh, they were saying, and the Taliban said as well, that education and everything, it's all right, it's fine, they can go on, even women are uh -huh. allowed to work. But that's what they say, and that's what they said 20 years before mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So you never know. Um, 
and we are trying uh, alongside with Professor Atoy, uh, Jalal Atoyi, the one who uh, I'm working with, mm -hmm. um, we are trying to pick it up again after I think around a month, uh, almost three weeks, we haven't been um, teaching, so mm -hmm. I hope we can pick it up mm -hmm. again. Even though there are students who have left or who are gone, we, we, uh, we have lost contact with. It's very hard, but um, we hope we can uh, we can teach again. We can bring hope for them yeah. in such a situation. That's the only thing you can do, right? Mm -hmm. so. What is a good way of participating at the moment? There are a lot of people who are... Um, expressing uh, their interest in helping, right. um, how they can help you and uh, the foundation that we work for um, to help further on to the people who are in Afghanistan and who, do, who haven't been lucky like us to get out. Right, right. That's a really good question. Um, right now, um, we've got social media. Mm -hmm. That's a very... Uh, some people say it's very negative, a uh, negative thing of the 21st century, but right now it's a very good tool um, to spread awareness, mm -hmm. and that's the best thing. That, that's something everyone can do, like mm -hmm. follow, uh, for uh, for example, Kaihan, or uh, they can give up updates. You can give donations or uh, sign petitions stuff like that, or go to your local, except, uh, for example, your church or a mosque somewhere mm. where they uh, need help. Uh, we, we got so many donations in Zeiss, in Groningen. Uh, you can go and help there for a day, like uh, sort out stuff and uh, do things like that. There are so many, but there are so many possibilities. Amazing. Mm. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is another uh, episode that we have to uh, <laughs> slowly uh, close out. But I think we have one element left, right? Uh, the favorite light on her. Oh yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Don't we love that element? Yeah. <laughs> and who is your favorite Leidener? Well, I was going to choose someone called Samuel, who actually isn't from Leiden originally, but he sells a street magazine outside our local Albert Heijn. But then I wasn't sure if he counted as a Leiden now. But I have serious respect for him because he, you know, he keeps pursuing that, and he's, he's a great guy, and he's always very friendly, and always has a, just encourages me as well, just talking to him, you know, and even his faith and so on. Um, but the actual Leidenau I chose um, is Lucas Van Leiden. Um, oh, there he is on the uh, screen looking. So handsome. Very oh, handsome great. and far more hair than I could ever have. <laughs> so, um, I, one of the things, I, there's lots of things we love about living in the, the Netherlands. Some of it is the artwork. And, and I think in Leiden we're really fortunate having all the different museums that we have. And this guy, Lucas Van Leiden, uh, lived in Leiden, not surprisingly, because of his actor man. Um, and uh, just a number of his paintings um, I really like, and of course Rembrandt's the obvious person to say, but this guy's detail. The others well. are usually on the on the dark. Yes, precisely. <laughs> um, but in the Larkin Hole, there is a large uh, triptych, so a three-piece uh, old old altar piece. It's actually the Last Judgment. Um, I love that one, yeah, by the way. because oh. you can sit on the bench. Um, it's so default for me. It yeah, was beautiful. Yeah, I mean, some of it looks slightly like out of the Lord of the Rings, you know, <laughs> the, the, on one side in terms of style. But uh, I often sit there, well, often two, three times I'll go and sit there and just reflect on life, what's life about, what are the important things to believe. Amazing. Thank yeah. you for sharing. Reina, mm -hmm. who is yours? My favorite Leidner is Zala Pamir. She's actually the secretary of Skyhan Foundation and the first person I came in contact with and also in contact with Hello Leiden, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, she's been working, uh, she's a medical student as well. Uh, she has lived in Leiden and studied here. Uh, she's becoming a doctor. And um, I'm very thankful because through her I came into Skyhan and I was able to uh, give a deeper meaning to my life. <laughs> Speaking of the deep meanings, um, and do something back to humankind. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for um, feeling this uh, amazing episode with your stories and so much wisdom and uh, so much laughter and joy. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, thanks so for having us. We've enjoyed yeah. being here. No, thank you Love for to being here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really nice. So, folks, that's the end of another episode of Hello Leiden at Slotusla TV. Um, don't miss watching uh, our episode on Saturday at 9 o'clock. And if you are a foreigner living in Leiden and you have a story to share, just like Rowena and Andy, mm -hmm. please do email us at hello Leiden at slotusla.nl. Um, uh, no. Well, that's it. Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Khushamadi Leiden. Zdrasui Leiden. Hello Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hello Leiden. Marhaba Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi, Pudai Leiden.